Registered Phenomena Code 474 Object Class Beta Orange Hazard Types Temporal Teleportation Former Containment Procedure RPC-474 is to remain in Containment Cell 24 and Site-313 until further notice. Any personnel under Level 3 clearance are not authorized to access RPC-474 or its Containment Cell. Any inquiries involving RPC-474 are to be directed to Director Johnson or Head Researcher Sykes. Containment Procedures Update February 3, 2020 RPC-474's whereabouts are currently unknown. Any recorded instance of RPC-474 in any medium is to be reported to Director Johnson immediately. If RPC-474 reappears within the Acknowledged Authority timeline, MST Victor-83 is to be dispatched to locate and contain RPC-474. For more information, view Incident Log RPC-474-1. Description RPC-474 takes the form of a British K-6 phone booth, with a height of 275cm and a uniform width of 100cm. The interior of RPC-474 contains a royal blue carpet floor, a rotary phone, and a book chained to the bottom base of the phone. The book is titled The Blue Pages, and contains codes to access various points in space and time in light blue colored pages. The book will henceforth be classified as RPC-474-1. RPC-474's anomalous properties is its ability to fold through the fourth dimension, manipulating itself to move across the space-time continuum. This form of time travel is limited to only within the planet Earth, and is in no way able to travel outside the gravitational pull of the planet, according to RPC-474-1. RPC-474 is able to land inside structures and buildings, however, it will only land within the natural axis of the Earth, and will negate roofs and floors of buildings. It is currently unknown if RPC-474 is able to land on amphibious vehicles, as that is not mentioned within RPC-474-1. RPC-474-1 acts as a directory to RPC-474's travel capability cataloging various codes, and translate the location and time. RPC-474-1's first pages are an overview of how to operate RPC-474 through the rotary phone. Space and time is broken down to several sects of code, which together are described by RPC-474-1 as the space-time code. The code is further explained in the opening pages of RPC-474-1. The space-time code is inputted into the phone in three parts, space, era, and time. First you would have to pick up the phone, then input the latitude and longitude. Next you would select either AD or BC via the asterisk button. Only press the asterisk if you are going into years before Christ. Finally you input the calendar date, then the time. If the code is inputted correctly, you will hear a musical tone playing from the phone and will be transported to that point in space and time. Let's give an example on how this works in practice. Let's say you want to go to April 15, 1865 and see Lincoln get shot. You would input the location first via latitude and longitude, which in this case would be 388968 first, then 770263. Next you input the date, which in this example we would not punch in the asterisk considering Lincoln died after Christ. We would then enter 04151865 for the calendar date, and then 2215 for the time. Every time a successful sequence is inputted, you must press the pound sign on the phone to confirm the sequence. If you successfully input the sequence in the correct order, you will hear a musical cue, and you will be transported to that time and space. If you get the space and time bits mixed up, don't worry, space and time both have different numeral requirements meaning if you enter too many or too few numbers, you will receive an error. Discovery RPC-474 appeared within Containment Cell 24 of Site-313 on January 13, 2020. It is unknown at this time how RPC-474 arrived at Site-313. RPC-474 did not produce any other anomalous traits since its first appearance, 
remaining stationary during the duration of its containment. As such, RPC-474 has been classified as Beta. However, due to the unpredictability of the field of time travel, as well as the inconclusiveness of research within said field, RPC-474 was further classified as a Beta Orange. Incident Log RPC-474-1 On February 3, 2020, at 12.35 am Eastern, a containment breach was initiated by Junior Researcher Esquire, who entered a containment cell of RPC-474 under the ruse of a routine containment check. Esquire proceeded to lock out the two protection officers on guard and entered RPC-474. RPC-474 dematerialized ten seconds later, initiating a containment breach protocol in the entirety of Site-313. During investigation, Security footage of the incident revealed that Researcher Esquire acquired an instance of RPC-916. This was further confirmed by the security footage recorded when RPC-474 first arrived, where Researcher Esquire was shown to have acquired a small pamphlet that seemed to have materialized within the confines of RPC-474. This instance of RPC-916 was not accounted for during research on RPC-474. As RPC-474 dematerialized, a letter signed to Director Johnson materialized in RPC-474's place. The letter, henceforth referenced as RPC-474-2, reads as follows. Director Johnson, I am writing to inform you that I am doing well, having grown to an old age, older than you perhaps. In my travels with this phone booth, I have discovered wonders that would enlighten even the most profound of men. However, due to my predicament, I cannot indulge in those enlightenment. Being lost in time isn't exactly a cup of tea, if I am honest. If you are wondering, no, I do not regret stealing this RPC. The discoveries I have uncovered have answered some of the questions we have had involving the greater universe, both within the confines of time and space. Granted, these discoveries were by sheer accident, if I have to be honest. I didn't intend on recreating history with myself in mind. Instead, I took the opportunity to learn and to research properly, unrestricted from the change of the authority process. To begin this new journey, I took the RPC to Harvard in 1966, as the world itself seemed more open to the idea of traveling through extra-dimensional means in those days, with new discoveries being made almost every day. As I was learning, I discovered something that intrigued me. If I interacted with others in one time, then jumped to the future, they ceased to acknowledge my existence. When this started, I merely deduced it as human error, believing that I have successfully shown myself as uninteresting as possible. However, this was later disproved when an unfortunate accident by my hand led to the death of a student on campus. This event left me distraught. However, when I jumped to the future a mere day later, the student was still alive. This event took hold of my curiosity, wondering how the student was still alive despite my intrusion. I decided to see how far I could potentially go with this enigma, experimenting with the space-time continuum to see how much punishment it could take. I started small, a car crash here, a political death here, etc. The timeline didn't change. After these conclusions, I stepped up to severe events, such as killing Hitler, stopping 9-11 continuing the Cold War, etc. Again, the timeline didn't change. This leads to the question, what happened to the events I caused? If I was allowed to theorize, I could imagine that my actions that deviate from the current timeline splintered it, creating a new timeline that branches off the current one. Unfortunately, this is merely a theory, for I do not have concrete evidence to support this claim. I do know who may have the answers, however. As I am writing this, I am traveling to the one person who may have the answers I seek in this dilemma, Aurelia Augustulus, based on the instructions I have received from my copy of RPC-916. It seems that my actions have angered her enough to request an audience. I am hoping to get answers for not only myself, but for the entirety of humanity. If I do not return, have solace in knowing that I do not regret stealing RPC-474 as it was the greatest decision I have made in my career. I surely hope that you of all people would understand, Director. Best regard, Theodore Esquire.